Joining us is Marin Katusa, Chief Energy Strategist, KC Research. He was a mathematics professor before he left academics to apply his models to portfolio management. Uh, he's a sought-after portfolio manager and a sought-after speaker, uh, CNBC, RT, CBC, Rights for the Business Network News. Uh, and he also is the founding director of Copper Mountain, Canada's third largest copper mine. And he's chief energy strategist for KC Research. Uh, over the years, Martin has been involved in raising over $1 billion in capital for early stages and producing resource companies. So he is a true trailblazing entrepreneur. Uh, Colderwar.com uh, to break down his book. Uh, sir, thank you for coming on today. Uh, I want to get into Russia, the inside baseball, where energy policy is going, what's happening with the oil war. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Well, you've got the floor. Start, start breaking down where we are right now from an inside perspective. Alex, it's very scary. What the West, America, the European Union, they're starting to play Russian roulette. And Putin is not backing down. He's putting more forces to eastern Ukraine. And now Obama's leaked some um, documents stating that the Americans may supply lethal artillery and weapons and manpower. So more boots, more American boots, more American uh, weaponry in Ukraine. Uh, you don't want to put more sanctions on Russia because now Greece has vetoed these. But more importantly, the existing sanctions have pushed Russia and China closer together than ever before. They're doing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of deals, the largest construction project in the world. And all this is doing is uniting the Russian bear and the Chinese dragon, and that is the worst possible outcome for America and the West. It's a very bold strategy to send in CIA commandos and others to be engaging the Russians in combat the last six months. That's basically admitted $5 billion to overthrow the Ukrainian government. I'm not, again, I don't have a dog in the fight here. It's just clear the West is instituting and instigating all this. Sure, they're hurting Russia right now, driving down the price of oil. But long term, this is a really dangerous game. What do you think the Western powers are thinking? Well, it's all about the NATO expansion. It's trying to expand Europe, uh, the European Union. The EU is broke. Uh, you know, Greece now, a, a real insignificant country when you look on the global scale and by no means as a superpower, is now dictating the terms of the sanctions against Russia. So you can see the European Union is a basket case. And, you know, America is now being drawn into this because of the EU. And there really is nothing here positive for the average American here. The Ukraine conflict's getting worse. It's going to get worse. Uh, it's going to last longer. And it's just going to be a drain on the U.S. economy. Well, when the West attacked uh, Russian-held areas in Georgia, uh, they miscalculated and the Russians poured in and threatened nuclear war in Europe. I mean, if Russia's not backing down and the West isn't backing down, what are the policymakers thinking? It's not like Russia's on our southern border attacking us. We're attacking them. Exactly. And the worst part of this, now you look at the Russian population within the eastern Ukraine. They, this is a secession war. This is not a civil war. And they want to join Russia. Look at Crimea. Putin has now hinted that because Crimea is now part of Russia, they have the sovereign right to move their nuclear weapons to Crimea, which is just on the edge of Europe. So there's a lot of risks here. And the difference is the Russian people are solely behind the Slavic warrior Putin. They defend what Putin is doing. They are proud of what Putin is doing because they see him standing up against the West. The question I have is Obama's got two years left. What is the future foreign policy here? If the new president continues this failed foreign policy, it's just going to be a lot worse for Europe and the U.S. And the Russians here have nothing to lose. They have an expansionary program, and they're fit to fight, and they are plan on fighting. They're not going to back down. So the question is, is what's the West going to do now? Well, they just push and push and push, because the people running the West are not Americans like, like a John Wayne or a Ronald Reagan. Uh, they want to export George Soros tyranny back to Russia. They want socialism for the general public and their own crony system above it, controlling it. Uh, and they're turning Al Qaeda loose all over the Middle East. What do you see in the grand strategy worldwide happening right now? What's the grand strategy? What's happening with the driving down oil prices? Uh, break down your book for us, The Colder War, how the global energy trade slipped from America's grasp. Alex, you're nailing all the most important parts here. You know, I find it shocking that Obama and his wife go to Saudi Arabia and King Salman, the new king of Saudi Arabia. In our book, we have a chapter called The Shaky House 
Assad. How come no one's really talking about the truth of who King Salman? He was funding the uh, Afghani extremists that the Americans were fighting. He was fighting. Uh, he was funding the Bosnian Muslim extremists that the West fought against. This is chaos, and now they're trying to show him as a great leader, as a moderate. That is all false. If you look into the past of King Salman, he was the financier. He was the point man for all of the funding of what today is ISIS. ISIS is getting stronger. Obama came out today and said, hey, let's relax. You know, ISIS is not that big of a deal. Really? Ask the Japanese uh, if ISIS is a big deal or not. ISIS is getting stronger. Uh, the Saudi Arabia, there's very vulnerable here. The price of oil is collapsing. The Bakken, the Eagleford, hundreds of billions of dollars of debt. We haven't even seen the debt roll over in the U.S. There's a lot of risk. And the debt that is potentially to blow up in the U.S. shale sector could be greater than what happened to the Lehman Brothers. This is a huge risk. And at the same time, they're trying to distract things with Ukraine. Ukraine is really an insignificant. What, what does EU get? It's the breadbasket of Eastern Europe. There's not much going on there other than major debt. The Ukraine owes over 18 billion to Russia. So there's a lot of problems. I see worse uh, controversy, more uh, death, more wars, more battles in the Middle East. I see uh, Eastern Europe getting worse. And more importantly, the emerging markets are working together supporting Putin. Look what China's doing against the Western philosophy. So there really is a battle between the old world order and the new world order. And right now, it's the new world order that is winning. So when you say new world order, you mean the people that run the U.S., England, Europe, uh, you're saying they're winning? No, actually, if you look at what's going on with China, they are backing the Russians. So you're saying that's the new new world order. Is Correct. that new world order they're calling for? That's right, the emerging markets, because they want the lifestyle that the West has taken for granted, and they are going to work together against this. And, you know, really, one third of all of America's debt is owned by China, and China does not play by, you know, the UN's rules. Uh, if you look at all the voting uh, on the UN, they've always backed Russia. Where's India here? There's a reason why Obama's putting so much time into India. Historically, India is going to align themselves up with Russia. Who's really supplying the military of India? It's Russia, China, Russia, India. The emerging markets are working together against the forces of Europe, Western Europe and America. And right now, if you see Ukraine is a good example of what's going on, you know, you really who's winning here? The Russians are winning in the Ukraine. Let me raise this point. We see mainstream articles in The Guardian out of Davos where George Soros is running around with his minions saying, you better give $100 trillion to the IMF and World Bank to help poor people. There's going to be a global uprising against wealth. And the billionaires are running off the Cook Islands and, and New Zealand and other areas, building armored redoubts in private long airstrips and admitting it's because of this. But then meanwhile, Soros is trying to stir up civil unrest everywhere. What do you think's behind that? Well, there's always an agenda. Where are his investments going? You know, he, he, there's no secret that he was the funder of the Orange Revolution, the Rose Revolution in the early 2000s against Russia. This time is a bit different situation. The Russians are working together with China and their forces are going to be working against that. So Soros has his agenda where his investments are. You know, no one's asking, is he trying to protect his investments? You know, there, there's no secret that Soros has been a big investor in Ukraine. He's potentially there to lose billions of dollars. So he's trying to use the government's money to bail out his own investments. So there's a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't see. Um, again, in the Middle East. Well, that's right. I mean, he called for a Marshall Plan 10 of billions of dollars to be given basically directly to him. Exactly. It's the American taxpayer that is funding his investments. Well, I mean, I agree with you that up until about six months ago, Putin was beating the West. And again, I'm not lionizing him, but Putin's not here running things, trying to take my guns and running ads everywhere saying fathers are bad. I mean, we got a really sick elite, make no mistake. Uh, but I'd take the real American system any day over what Russia's got. So I'm not rooting against America. I'm just here looking at the tea leaves. But now since the Saudis and others slashed oil prices, or I know you're an expert on energy, so break that down for us. Uh, it seems like it's really hurting Russia, hurting the ruble. Uh, I mean, in a football game, it looks like uh, the devil patriots are coming back a little bit. Well, exactly. And what's key to understand here for Russia, why they are going to survive here. First of all, they're the world's largest crude oil producer, but they produce in rubles and they sell in euros and U.S. dollars. So they won't experience Dutch disease. When you're a petrol state, when you're a real producer of oil, the worst thing you want is a decreasing commodity price 
and a strengthening dollar. So I will argue that the Bakken and the Eagleford are experiencing Dutch disease here because their costs are in U.S. dollars and they sell in U.S. dollars. So what's this all about is international market share. You got the Arab Gulf states, you know, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, UAE. They are major producers and they're trying to increase their market share. Russia is a major producer. They're trying to increase their market share. And then the U.S. shale sector has been hugely successful. They're trying That's to bankrupt that. Exactly. And this is a war against the U.S. shale sector. I put an article out that OPEC declared war on U.S. Thanksgiving Day where all the analysts expected OPEC to cut production. I said, no way. They are not going to uh, cut production because they're declaring war on America because America was the largest consumer of the OPEC oil, but now they're a competitor against and OPEC. And by the yeah, the U.S. starting two years ago is the biggest producer in the world. And for those that don't know, this is in The Economist. This is in the Financial Times that are establishment mouthpieces. They admit Saudi Arabia and OPEC are waging war on us, just as they are on Russia. That's a perfect example of globalism. You think America against Russia? No. Or you think America against Russia or EU? The EU is getting hurt. The people are getting hurt by what's hurting Russia. This only helps a few insiders uh, having all this unfold. That's right. And you know what no one wants to talk about, Alex? Where did Saudi Arabia, before they saw the collapse in oil, they took billions of dollars positions on the short of oil. They shorted American companies. They shorted the U.S. production. And they made billions of dollars on the decrease of price of oil. How come no one's talking about that? It's amazing. Establishment publications admit it, but uh, you know these average people out there, good, hurt Russia. It doesn't help anybody for a major country to do bad, folks. That ends up pulling everybody down. Let me ask you this. Seeing this global recessionary trend intensify, are you worried about deflationary or inflationary? And do you agree that Russia having trouble will hurt Europe and then ultimately pull down the Middle East and then the U.S.? I mean, I, I see this as a trigger event. Alex, I think currently we are in a deflationary resource environment and deflation is the worst thing for country planners because when you have less money to play with, you can't cover up. Look at the Arab Spring. What did Saudi Arabia do to prevent any revolutionary? They just created a lot of social program spending. That ends in a deflationary market and deflation is very bad. It's gonna, what results from a deflationary environment is more global conflict. And that's what we see in Europe. That's what we see in the Middle East. And right now we haven't seen it yet in the US, but with all of these job layoffs, that are going to come in the high paying jobs of the Bakken. We are in a new and deflationary environment, which means more crises globally are going to occur. More battles, more wars, more deaths. Energy battles. I mean, you see Russia now moving into the North Pole. We'll discuss all this and more. Then your phone calls are coming up. The book available at caseyresearch.com or colderwar.com. The Colder War by Marin Katusa. I'm Alex Jones with infowars.com because there is a war on for your mind. That's the whole point. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. Interested in free bitcoins? Stay tuned for more information. Are you worried about Big Brother watching your bank account? Frustrated with annoying fees? Concerned about unauthorized access to your account? What if there was a way to be your own bank? Bitcoin gives you a way to take back control of your money. The citizens of two large countries have already turned to Bitcoin when their economies collapsed. Unlike U.S. dollars, there is a limited number of Bitcoins. The government cannot simply decide to print more. Eight million people are already using Bitcoin anonymously with 90,000 retailers accepting them. Investors have put $4 billion into Bitcoin, with millions more being invested daily. Bitrush.com is based in Texas and provides the most profitable way to own Bitcoins. To receive your own free Bitcoins, you can visit us at www.bitrush.com. 
bitrush.com. That's B-I-T-R-U-S-H dot com. Or call us at 1-800-200-8202. Again, that's bitrush.com or 1-800-200-8202 for free bitcoins. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions. Silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at Silverlungs.com. That's Silverlungs.com. Hey. Sorry I'm running late. I had to stop and get my vitamins for the month. I got mine in the mail yesterday from DiscountNutritionShop.com. So I'm here, totally on time. <laughs> DiscountNutritionShop.com? Yep, they're a lifesaver in more ways than one. They have all the nutritional supplements you need, the major brands you know. Plus, you can save up to 10%. Write down this number, 888-908-4548. Huh? 888-908-4548. Or just go to DiscountNutritionShop.com. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. I got it. Walt. Watch me. I got it. Hey. Rich, John, Vince, Alan. I'm going to get to all of you coming up eight after in the next hour. We're going to do two more short segments with uh, Marin Katusha, Chief Energy Strategist, KC Research. Talking to folks out there in the mining industry, in oil and gas, how long do they expect this OPEC Saudi led war against other independent energy sectors to go. I know the Saudis have been funding the peak oil myth forever. I know they've been funding uh, these attacks on any other exploration they don't control. And, I mean, I don't want to just demonize the Saudis, but I mean, come on, the Saudi government is a joke. And the president bowing down to them is an even bigger joke. And it just never seems to end. Well, where does your gut tell you all of this craziness is going? It's about market share, Alex, and I think it's going to get worse and it's going to be longer. Uh, what is going to win and what I believe is going to be prevail is the American innovation, the shale sector, the horizontal drilling, the fracking. Uh, that, that is an American innovation. And I think innovation uh, through necessity is what's going to prove and end up becoming the victor here because the difference is we can rely on our own oil and gas production, whereas the shaky house Assad or Kuwait, you know, these are basket cases we're waiting to be toppled and you can't rely on long-term supply. And that is why China is aligning itself with Russia. For example, they've, in, they've doubled the amount of oil they're importing from Russia in just the last four months because they know they can't rely on Middle East oil. So I think it's gonna, you know, the Middle East is going, the OPEC is going to flood the markets as much as they can. They're not gonna cut back production. Uh, they're gonna try to increase their uh, market share and go against and fight create a war against the U.S. shale sector. That's right. What do you expect to happen in the short term, medium term, uh, between the U.S. Uh, being drugged into this EU operation? Because I think that was disinfo when that tape got released of them saying, forget the EU, we want this war. I mean, it's the EU and the banksters that want to carve up Ukraine. There's not even a lot of U.S. interest there. Exactly. And I think this is just going to drag in and it's, it's going to be kind of a death spiral. For America because you know the Russians are ready to fight and I'm not sure Obama understands that or understands the Russian mentality yet and it's just gonna get worse and it's gonna be longer well the war planners certainly know that the Russians don't give up when it's their own land or their own area I mean it, it just it really makes me wonder about the arrogance of this elite definitely and you know we have to understand the West sees this as Putin invading Eastern Ukraine. But to the average Russian, they believed Crimea was always theirs. They believe that Eastern Ukraine is always theirs. To the average Russian, they believe Kiev is their historical founding city. So for the Russians, they are fighting for what they believe is theirs. The West, America, uh, the leaders in America today but don't understand that. And I don't think they're prepared for what the Russians are going to uh, put up here. And, and remember, the Russians are not afraid of rattling the nuclear weapons. And Putin's talked about it publicly. And this guy, is, you know, he's ready to play Russian roulette. My question is, is the EU-28 ready to uh, fight Putin? I don't well, think so. Well, you know the Russians are going to start other stuff. They're going to start poisoning people. They're going to have asymmetrical uh, sabotage stuff. I mean, if I was all these George Soros people, I mean, that he's, he's really got to be watching his back.
Oh, definitely, and not just George Soros. Look at all the, the short guys against the, you know, uh, the, the the Putinization of the resources. Uh, you know, a big question I have is, you know, the West in America, one in every ten homes in the last 25 years has been powered by Russian nuclear energy. This is a startling fact. What happens if Kazakhstan goes down? You know, there's so many problems here in the world that our media is not truly covering, and I'd be very worried if I was a George Soros type of character. Yeah. That guy just keeps getting away with everything. Every dog has his day sooner or later. You know what Johnny Cash says. I want to do five more minutes with you. I really appreciate you joining us. I want to walk through what you see as other big hot spots, what you see for the U.S. economy straight ahead, what's going on in the Canadian economy. Uh, Marin Katusa, chief energy strategist, Casey Research is our guest. The book is The Colder War. I'm Alex Jones. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Year after year, we watch the threat steadily increase. And now, this winter has been the worst on record when it comes to our immune systems and health. For more than two years, InfoWarsLife.com has been watching this crisis intensify. And Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Complex was our answer. Using a proprietary process that takes ancient proven herbs and combines them with modern science, this powerful and affordable formula contains more than 14 key herbs and extracts, including Echinacea, ginger root, elderberry, golden seal root, a proprietary yin chio formula, and many, many more. I take it, and so does my family. It's made in the USA, gluten-free, alcohol-free, no artificial flavors or colors, and not tested on animals. Take advantage of this introductory offer for ancient defense, normally $19.95, now only $14.95. That's 25% off. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139 to secure your ancient defense. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Third hour, your phone call's coming up in the next segment. Then I'm going to get into some good news. State legislators considering more than 200 bills to block federal power. And going back to our guest, the author of The Colder War, Marin Katusa, I see globalist oppression, globalist domination, forcing states, counties, cities, micro regions around the world to just stop complying. I don't care how computerized their systems are. I don't care how pushy their surveillance is. I've noticed that in the face of some of the technocrats personally, we've just operated how we want to and done what we want to. I, I think the big secret is folks don't realize the real power is in just doing it to steal a phrase from Nike. Definitely. You know, look, for example, look at towns in Canada, the Fort Mac, where all the oil sands, major layoffs, cutbacks in the billions of dollars. These are really high employed jobs, you know, starting salaries for a truck driver at $35 an hour that bam, those jobs are Notice gone. Canada suddenly isn't pro carbon tax. Exactly, because now they can't afford it. And you look at a country like even Saudi Arabia, where 50% of the males, the Shiite males, even though it's a Sunni majority, uh, the majority in the oil producing region are Shiites and 50% of the ages between 20 and 35 are unemployed. That is a uh, revolution just waiting for a catalyst. So you're gonna see as these higher unemployment rates come, you're gonna see more revolutions, especially in the petrol states. Look at Venezuela, that's ready to pop. Uh, there's a lot of problems globally. No kidding. And again, who do you see being the winner long term in this? I believe that if the politicians can stay out of the way of the energy sector, it will be America because we have the innovation, we have the intelligence, we have the entrepreneurship, the American dream is still alive in the oil patch. It's the politicians, it's the bureaucrats that get in the way with the red tape. Um, and I would put North America, I'd put the Canadians with the Americans there. Uh, I think the biggest losers are going to be the, the monarchies and, and you know, the, the old system, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Uh, they're waiting for a pin to pop that bubble. Looking at uh, Obama and the Western establishment, 
do you, what's your view or what intel do you have on whether the Saudis and OPEC did this on their own or whether they had approval from the West to destroy the uh, new energy sector uh, led by shale? I think that Obama definitely didn't prevent them from creating this war on the shale sector. You know, Obama's mandates really make no sense where certain areas when they were economic he shut the window for exploration now in the Atlantic coast he's opening up areas that are uneconomic so Obama's completely oblivious to the economics sure. of the oil sector but Saudi Arabia really declared war on the shale sector and it's about market sure. share spend a minute and a half on Keystone I know you're an expert on that yeah, well, Keystone, look, the key there is the Jones Act. They're going to try to switch in, which is going to be a big uh, devastation for the U.S. Marine, the jobs. There's over $2 billion in jobs there that, you know, they're going to bring in Asian ships to ship the oil within the U.S. ports. Uh, but the problem with the uh, Keystone XL is they're going to increase shipping oil via rail. That's very dangerous for the American people. Number two, rather than building new pipelines, they're going to depend on old pipelines that were built when Elvis Presley was singing blue suede shoes. That's also a big risk. And now they've missed the window at $45 oil. You're not building any new pipelines. So a recession in infrastructure building. Exactly. You know, all the companies are pulling back on it and they've missed the window. And again, and, uh, Warren Buffett uh, is highly invested along with George Soros in the trains that are going to transship it out to the west coast of Canada instead of coming to us. And not only that. Warren Buffett's the largest shareholder and the largest oil sands producer in Canada that's going to ship that Canadian heavy oil th through the hold rail. Hold on, so hold on. Can you do five more minutes with us? Sure, no problem. Okay, we're going to come back. I want to give you the floor to talk about George Soros and, and Warren Buffett and, and how they killed Keystone uh, so that they could then ship the oil to China. I mean, it's just you want to know how economics really works, folks, how the screw jobs work. And it's always the same criminals. It's always, always the same turds. Uh, we're going to have a final uh, talk with him, then go right to Walt and others that are patiently holding. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without silver bullet. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888-253-3139. Silver bullet. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality. Specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel Body Armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Year after year, we watch the threat steadily increase. And now, this winter has been the worst on record when it comes to our immune systems and health. For more than two years, InfoWarsLife.com has been watching this crisis intensify, and Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Complex was our answer. Using a proprietary process that takes ancient proven herbs and combines them with modern science, this powerful and affordable formula contains more than 14 key herbs and extracts, including Echinacea, ginger root, elderberry, golden seal root, a proprietary yin chio formula, and many, many more. 
I take it and so does my family. It's made in the USA, gluten-free, alcohol-free, no artificial flavors or colors, and not tested on animals. Take advantage of this introductory offer for Ancient Defense, normally $19.95, now only $14.95. That's 25% off. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139 to secure your Ancient Defense. Take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. And Marin Katusa doing another five minutes with us. The cold, colder war. How the global energy trade slipped from America's grasp. Can't wait to read this book. I've only scanned over it. Very informative. And he is the chief energy strategist for KC Research. Also the leader and owner of one of the largest uh, copper mines in Canada. One of those evil entrepreneurs that actually goes out there and explores and builds things. How horrible. You're just supposed to fly around in jumbo jets on taxpayer expense with red carpets to give speeches about how poor people need to be more poor for the earth. Uh, so Marin uh, is our guest for a few more minutes. Then we're going to go directly to your phone calls and a bunch of really important news I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but looking at this... And looking at the Keystone Pipeline, it's a microcosm that they've spent better part of a decade trying to block its construction and then not letting it open from Canada down into Texas to refineries the feds under Bush and Obama have blocked opening in Corpus Christi and other areas. We haven't opened one new refinery in almost 30 years. This is the deindustrialization model where only select international ship zones can have new factories or facilities built and those of course are tax exempt and you've got the standard players uh, like warren buffett and others with their tax-free foundations that own the railroads that would bring the oil to the west coast to be sold to china and japan instead of bringing canadian oil to the united states and to the gulf of mexico to ship the oil to the world uh, and in almost every case, our government bipartisan chooses the path that doesn't let America have any jobs. So I guess we'll just go be on welfare or, or have a government job or, or an entertainment job. They don't want us having infrastructure. Another great example was uh, Pachari, the head of the uh, UN Climate Bureau, would openly lobby to have British steel mills shut down. And then the last one that they shut down was moved to India, where he and his son owned it. So people ask, why are all these rich people for this? Because they can pick winners and losers. They can shut off their competition. And there's countless examples of this, but Congress could investigate Warren Buffett. Congress could stop this. This is a national security issue when you've got a legal, lawful, safe, new pipeline compared to the old ones, much safer, and they're trying to shut it off. We're trying to shut off our coal plants. They, it's a bunch of rich insiders all day long trying to suppress everyone's industry but theirs. But notice, it, it, Warren Buffett could have been involved in a Keystone Pipeline and made money bringing oil to America. There is a fundamental hatred of this republic because they, they hate our great-grandparents. They hate the people they couldn't control. It's about dominating America, and these elites want to have fights with people that are already dead. Even though they run this country, they instinctively hate the West and want to destroy it. That's my view on this. Give me your take on it, um, Marin. And then I want you to break down the details of the Keystone Pipeline and, and why people like Warren Buffett killed it. Well, Alex, you bring up some great points here. For example, let's take Warren Buffett. Not only is he the sole owner of uh, Burlington or Santa Fe, which brings all the oil out of the oil sands into the U.S., to the north, to the west, to the east, but more importantly, you know, there's this misconception that this Canadian oil is so dirty and it's bad, but why is Warren Buffett, the American legend in investing, one of the largest shareholders of the the largest oil sand producing company called Suncor. And yet, you know, he's quietly moved in there and become a major shareholder. And that oil now is controlled through the shipping of him. And isn't it convenient that the pipeline isn't built because he wouldn't have as much control and his railways wouldn't be supplied. Now the growth of the rail, uh, shipping oil via rail has increased by over 20 times since Warren Buffett bought the railway. Is it 
A coincidence? Hell no. Number two, you look at George Soros, you know, he's trying to be seen as a, you know, a renaissance man globally. He has quietly built up a position in uh, the largest unhedged uh, U.S. uranium producer. Now, that doesn't really fit his image, but yet now he's getting into the U.S. uranium sector through Uranium Energy Corp, and now he's become one of the major shareholders in that company. So these guys have an image that they portray in public, but what they're doing with their dollars is very different, and they build up it quietly. So that's something that's really important to understand. And what's important is they use their political control exactly. to then manipulate and not let their competition operate in the market. That's right. It's very un-American what's going on here, especially with the Keystone XL, which is it's not only environmentally safe for the environment, for the people, it makes all the sense economically. It's all high paying jobs. Everything about it makes sense. And most importantly, let's get rid of the riskiest way to ship oil is via a rail. OK, it's 30 times more likely to have an accident shipping oil via rail than a pipeline. And let's get rid of these old pipelines that were built before the 1960s. They were never designed to still keep control of moving the oil through these old pipelines. And I was so about to say, you can track this, though. It's the same usual suspects, Soros and others that are financing the well-meaning Hollywood people that go and tie themselves to the pipelines and say, don't build them. It hurts the earth. Oh, you're going to kill the caribou. Oh, you're going to kill this and that. When those pipelines are just incredibly safe and good compared to, to, to trains. Not and only then, that, Alex, <laughs> I, I find it shocking how Qatar, okay, the world's largest LNG producer, financed the Hollywood movie called Broken Promises, which is anti-U.S. shale development. It's mind-boggling to me that they even allowed to do this. And it's mind-boggling to me that Gazprom, the world's largest gas producer, is telling Europe and America that that shale gas is bad. You know, come on, let's really look at the facts here that Qatar really cares about America's uh, environment. Hell no, they don't want the U.S. Uh, shale gas eating into their international market share. That's what it's about. But the propaganda coming through Hollywood is just creating lies for the people. Amazing. Anything else we should uh, know uh, dealing with pipelines? Because it's not just these pipelines being shut down. And you just mentioned how we're about to lose contracts for U.S. ships to carry uh, the oil up and down the rivers. That'll be given to Chinese companies. And this country's being sold out right now. Alex, I think what you're doing is where it starts. Just keep bringing the truth to people and eventually the truth will prevail. Uh, stick with the American innovation. We will do well. It's going to be a battle, but we will win. All right, folks, you can find the book uh, available at CaseyResearch.com or ColderWar.com. Thank you so much for the time, Mr. Katusa. My pleasure. Anytime, Alex. All right, there he goes. I'm going to go right.